Utopia Press. Hey, how you doing, Zach? <laughs> What's going on, brother? You are live right now on the Zach Moonshine Show. How you doing? Um, I'm doing great, man. I'm just listening to the uh, the tunes, freaking out, going, "Holy crap, is that ever produced well, man?" <laughs> Some crazy shit. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So, uh, so tell us, man, what's going on in your world, man? Uh, a lot of recording and uh, writing tunes, but not really playing live, but uh, having a lot of fun. You know. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of people aren't playing live right now, man. Yeah, so, yeah, just, it's good to, you know, focus and, uh, and get into it, you know? So, voila, we have a record. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. This record sounds amazing, dude, and uh, big thanks for uh, sending me the fucking vinyl, dude. I love it, man. I just got it today. Cool. We love vinyl. I think it just sounds so much better on vinyl. Oh, my God. I mean, Digital is cool, you know. It's it's great. It's just a different medium, you know. It sounds sounds great, cranked. It's Hell a little yeah. punchier. Hell yeah, man. Uh, so so tell us, man. Like, um, going back to the beginning, like, how did you get into music, and, and what got you started, and and how did you get to this point where you're at right now? Um, I guess you know, like everybody, when you're young, you get the bug. You know, you listen to the radio, you hear shit, and you go. Man, that sounds really good. What the hell is that? What is that guitar, you know? So I was intrigued by guitars. And, uh, you know, you go down to the store, you look at this funky-looking guitar with five pickups, and you're like, what the hell? I got to get one of those and make some sounds, you know? And then you start garage bands, and away you go, you know? And then I got into, you know, started bands, playing clubs, and uh, hung around with a lot of producers here in Montreal. Got into some, en you know, assistant engineering. And uh, doing a lot of demos for bands, a lot of death metal bands, actually. That's why I really enjoy your show. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's moved on from there. I'm influenced by everything, really. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, you in the email that you sent me, you were talking about uh, like a bunch of death metal bands and stuff. That kind of threw me off because this music is so chill. But yeah, it's kind of like I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, the first bands we uh, started playing, the original bands, uh, the first band that the drummer that's on this record, uh, Paul Doonan, we had a trio in the '90s signed to a label from New York. And uh, we were kind of pegged as alt metal, and we're far from that now. But uh, that's what we were doing at the time, and now we're doing this. So, you know, maybe the next record will be heavier. I don't know. I've been listening to a lot of heavy stuff lately, and I'm going, man, I've been chill, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in the beginning, I was doing, uh, I was recording uh, bands like Cataclysm. Uh, Demons, a lot of Montreal it was a big death metal scene here, and working in the studios, you record all kinds of bands. So I was starting to, uh, you know, I worked in with another producer uh, that did bands like uh, Gwar and uh, Voivod. So I was an assistant engineer and hanging out with those guys and learned a lot of stuff. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it rubbed off on my earlier bands. <laughs> so, but this stuff is uh, pretty straight ahead, you know, blues, classic rock influenced. Uh, you know, there's a lot of blues in there. There's a lot of straight up stuff. Um, you know. Yeah, I love it, man. This is the this is the kind of stuff that you want to light up a joint and just sit back and and uh, just just relax and listen to, man. Like I. I can picture it in a smoky bar somewhere, you know, fucking, like you said, like the blues, man, the guitar sounds in this is, is fucking killer, man, I love it. Yeah, we invited a lot of friends uh, to join in on the record, you know, we, over the years you get to know a lot of different players, and I thought this was a great opportunity, because, you know, we have a certain vibe, but there's a lot of room for a different style of guitar players, so I invited a few quite a few actually on it and uh so we got all kinds of stuff and 
it turned out great man it's like we're really happy about the you know the tracks that people laid down in their home studio remotely which is insane yeah but it it, the production on this really sounds good too, man. Uh, I know there's probably a lot of gearheads out there listening right now. Can you give us a rundown of like what kind of equipment and stuff you were using? Um, you know, um, we tried to keep it uh, try to keep it pretty straightforward. You know, amps, guitars, um, using you know DAW type uh, Digio Two Focusrite kind of. Uh, converters but you know the regular standard mics the 421s the 57s nothing too high end but just kind of uh, straight ahead and not over processed stuff I kind of mm -hmm. did that at the end in the mastering and you know put a little spice on it at the end but not too much because it's kind of uh, it wasn't done in the big studios but we tried to get there as close as we could you know <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I got some questions for you uh, rolling in from the listeners, man. Uh, Cameron Landers from Rock and Roll Villain Society wants to know, what is the first album you ever bought? Oh, shit. Uh, Kiss. <laughs> uh, it was a Destroyer, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, big Kiss fan. Hell yeah. Wore the makeup, had the boots, opened the garage door. <laughs> we were Kiss, man. <laughs> Fuck so, yeah, yeah I, I grew up listening to vinyl right from the get go, and then, you know, it, uh, it kind of disappeared. Now it's back. So, yeah, back so, back in a big way, man. Yeah, I think it outsold CDs this year, right? Or <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. And it was nice to go into the vinyl shops in Montreal here. We dropped the vinyl for people to pick up and stuff, and I just floored it how big the stores are and how much vinyl there is, and wow, there's so much out there now, Hell yeah, which man. is great. It is, man. It really is. Like, uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I remember fucking, like, uh, about, about 15 years ago going to the record store, and it, it was when they were just starting to bring vinyl back in there, you know, and uh, they'd have all kinds of, they'd have records in there, like used records, and I would grab them for like three <laughs> three bucks, four bucks, you know, because nobody really cared that much, so, you know, it was just like, it was sort of like a nostalgic t type thing. Right. But, but I was like, fuck, man, I grew up with this shit, man. I'm going to grab this stuff, man, fucking. But, like, you know, it was super cheap, man, at that time, and now, oh, fuck, you, you can't, you can't even find anything for less than... <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, well, here in Montreal, records are like 35 bucks Canadian. Yeah. Uh, Started around 25, 35 bucks Canadian, you know? So, but they sound, you know, some of the older records are a little thin when you listen back to them. You're like, really? It sounded a lot bigger to me back then. But, you know, you just got to crank it a bit more. <laughs> But the production now, you can get away with a lot of stuff, and if you can do a decent home recording and, uh, you know, max it out on, and when you put it out on vinyl, it just, it takes you to that next level, you know? Yeah, it definitely does, man. And, and it's amazing how good they hold up, you know? Uh, a lot of people used to say stuff, you know, like, yeah, but it's got scratching and, and clicking and popping. I actually like that stuff. But, like, I have records, original pressings of Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. That, that are, some of them are older than me, man. And they, <laughs> they still sound great, you know? Like, I, I put them on and they still sound fucking just like you just grabbed them, you know? Yeah, well, I, a guy at the uh, use shop here in Montreal said, uh, you know, People, well, now people are taking care of their records quite well. You know, they're not throwing them on the ground and dropping beer on them. They're actually, you know, putting them in sleeves and taking care of them. So, you know, they're in good shape. Hell yeah. Uh, another question for you. DJ Leviathan wants to know, what got you on your path to metal? Um, 
Well, I, you know, in Montreal, there was this one place where we all kind of jammed. It's called Cité du Mille. And it, it's basically, it was beside a beer factory, and it's a big warehouse. And, my God, there must have been 200 bands in there at one time on a Friday night. Well, every night. It's 24-hour kind of place, you know? And it was just filled with metal bands. And, you know, that influenced me. Uh, I used to love Iron Maiden. I was into them and Priest. Uh, I love Judas Priest. I was freaking out on those guys. Uh, Sabbath, everybody, you know, all the guitar stuff. But then hanging around in that place, everybody was playing metal. So it just rubs off on you. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, you know, listening to your station and, you know, getting into a lot of new stuff. I've been out of the loop just writing this stuff and then started exposing this stuff to everybody and I'm listening to more radio and more podcasts and I'm like, my God, there's so much out there. <laughs> <clears throat> it's endless. I love it. It's like people are out there doing shit, which is great. Dude, you ain't kidding, man. Every day I get like fucking, I don't know, fucking like 100 to a toot toot from anywhere from 100 to 200 emails man and uh it's just there's so much it's it's hard to it's hard to dig through it all and take it all in you know but i mean that people are taking you know they're they're getting into it they're doing a job i think i don't know if it was you but i heard this uh i got some pr stuff from a band in brassard here in montreal and i'd never heard of them i'm like these guys are really good man you know, I watched their video, listened to them. I'm like, holy shit, these are really good guys. You know, this is a really, really top-notch production, you know? So people are really doing great on the recording side of things lately, which is great to hear. Oh, yeah. All right, I got another another question for you from uh, Titan. He wants to know what genres of bands influenced what you play today? Um, you know, uh, I'd say... Jeez. Um, I like uh, Tedeschi Trucks. I listen to, you know, I listen to the, the older stuff. Um, and, jeez, I don't know. Um, you know, I listen to ZZ Top. I love, I love old recordings. I love guitar sounds, tones. Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, um, over the years, I think everything influences you. That's why, on the record, we have quite an eclectic, uh, you know, group of songs. But we didn't want to stray from, you know, wherever the song was leading us. We were like, hey, that's what we came up with. Let's do it. You know, let's make that song. If it sounds like ZZ, let's sound like ZZ. Who gives a shit? You know, it sounds great. So that's how we approach it. But we're influenced by, man, everything. <laughs> Hell yeah. Even Rush. <laughs> <laughs> gotta have Rush, man. Gotta have Rush. I mean, I got to I got to use Getty Lee's Mini Moog. Uh, in the '90s, we had a band called Shifter, and uh, we recorded at the same studio Rush did, and we got to use uh, the drum room that was made for Neil Peart. Uh, we got to use Getty Lee's Mini Moog. Oh my uh, god. We were really spoiled. We got luck. We got lucky, and we got into some big studios early on. So we learned a lot of shit there. But uh, yeah, we got to play on some Rush uh, equipment, which was really cool. Hell yeah, man! Yeah, I can definitely tell. There's a lot of classic rock uh, sounds going on. But one thing I really like about this record is like, yeah, like every song is a totally different. Uh, it. it each song has like its own little universe man but they're all they all come together to make one it's really cool yeah. thanks thanks man it's uh you know we want to um we wanted to make something exactly that you know like you, we like the cinematic type of vibe where he just takes you and you can just and production wise we wanted to bring it you know the sounds because getting it right sound wise will you know uh, gets you into that vibe where you're right into the song and if uh, you do a good job of that and the writing it all hopefully it comes together and people get it you know yeah for sure man 
Uh, lyrically wise, uh, how would you describe these songs? Like, what what kind of stuff are you guys talking about? Um, I I think on well, some of the songs are uh, I'd say you know one song was based on uh, kind of this dream I had, uh, kind of a apocalyptic type dream where you wake up and you you know those kind of dreams where you think man i've is this a dream am i alive is this really happening like one of those dreams that seems so realistic and it was this apocalyptic type dream and it was the end of the world i'm the last guy standing on this fiery mountain going what the fuck is going on <laughs> and i came up with that tune lonely world and that imagery stuck in my head so and we tried to match that to a video and there we go you know so we write about stuff that kind of you know affects us and uh we wrote one song sideways it was a tribute to chris cornell that's on the digital release only nice <laughs> yeah rest in peace chris man yeah love soundgarden oh hell yeah hell yeah uh, another question, man. Like, looking back on your career, what's one of the craziest things that you've seen at a show, either your own or somebody else's? Can I say anything? Yeah, anything. On air? anything. <laughs> okay, we're playing at a place on Saint Denis Street. Uh, back in the day in the '90s, with my trio, Spirit Pushers, which is a great, great record we put out. Uh, and it was produced by Glenn Robinson. Uh, no, that was a different producer, sorry. Uh, that was the guy in New York. But we were playing in this club on St. Denis Street. And, you know, there's people are doing crazy things in front of you. And this girl decided to, you know, get naked and get busy right in front of us while we were playing. In front of the <laughs> bar, in front of the whole place. And we were just like is she doing what I think she's doing? And the bar guy's looking at us. He's like, just keep playing, man. Keep playing. <laughs> and stuff like that was very strange. But, you know, it was, it was crazy at the time. She must have really been feeling the music then, huh? I think so. I think so. The audience was quite, you know, everybody's sitting down at tables and they're going, woo, they're freaking out. All right. <laughs> but <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been some... We've had some good shows. We used to play, back in the day, we opened up for Voivod and the Headstones, a lot of Canadian bands uh, playing the scene here. We played in New York City. In New York City, Toronto, Montreal. So we're hoping to get back out, you know, with this stuff, because we think it rocks. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got another 20 tunes in the bank already we're ready to go for more but you know just waiting to get and play live oh yeah oh yeah another question for you uh titan wants to know what band or a group of music musicians would you most like to appear with on stage um would our band actually i would like to open up for foo fighters <laughs> hell yeah and I actually, well, yeah. They're, I mean, I'd love to open up for Velvet Revolver, but they're not there anymore. Um, but, uh, yeah. I think Foo Fighters, that would be cool. I think it would be a good match. Um, who else? I, I'd, say the, I'd say Foo Fighters. All right. The band name Utopia Press, how did you guys come up with that? Is there a story behind it? Not really, just kind of like, what well, we wanted a vibe where everybody, you know, I was thinking, hey man, we gotta get together, everybody's gotta get back together, like hang out, uh, you know, and party. And, you know, we, we got a lot of stuff to say on, on our tunes. We have, you know, we have our opinions on world things and world issues. And we're like, you know, we want to have a band where everybody comes and hangs out and parties and, you know, 
listens to what we gotta say kind of thing so like a utopia you know somewhere you feel safe and you can have a party <laughs> so that's just you know we just came up with that hell yeah man next question lady red wants to know what do you prefer bathtubs or showers showers <laughs> 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 there you go. <laughs> that was fucking. I was I was playing along to all the stuff you were playing. I was like, I was having a blast. I was like, shit, man. Like I did back when I was a kid, play along to the radio. Dude, that sounds awesome, man. Thanks. What are you What are you playing right now? What is that? Uh, it's a Marshall with a Bogan, thirty three watt. <laughs> It's like a, it's a 412 Marshall cab with a Bogan 33 watt um, PA. It's not even a guitar amp. Back in the 70s, uh, 70s, they came out with these PA amps that people would use in schools and shit. Mm -hmm. But they were actually modeled after Fender amplifiers. So it was basically a Fender, you know, uh, schematic. So... You know, and they had a, a really cool to, uh, tone. So I have two of those in stereo on that. And uh, I got too many guitars, which is great because I had lost them all. And now I got them all back. So I'm happy. <laughs> what happened? How did you lose them? Well, you know, we all have bills, uh, you know, and <laughs> they pile up. You would you pawn them? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I had to sell them. You know, which was tough. You know, it's the worst thing you got to do. But you got kids, you got bills to pay. It's like, okay, just get it done. It's just a guitar. Not really, but you got to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you, man. I've pawned a guitar to myself. But, yeah, yeah it, I, I always went back and got them, though, man. That's, that's definitely cool that you got them back, dude. Yeah, so I got a bunch and uh, having a lot of fun. And taking advantage of, of you know, this downtime that we all have right now to, to write like maniacs. And got a great bunch of guys playing with a drummer my whole life, Paul Doonan. Hugo as well on bass. Mario on keys. Uh, we invited Larry Connolly on 10,000 Worries. Uh, Michael Greenfield, who's a luthier. We... He played on Everything is a Lie. He did a killer track. Uh, Lyle Robinson, he's a jazz guy, but he laid down the blues on one track, killed us. Um, Daryl Stevens. Uh, we, it's just, it's great, man. Really happy with the, playing with all these guys. Hell yeah. Uh, Secret Weapon wants to tell you that uh, this is a very interesting interview and we have most likely grabbed enough info to write your biography. <laughs> if, if, Thanks. If that happens, will you sign him the first copy he wants to know? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Somebody in France in a little village asked for a signed autograph of the band, and the band hasn't been able to even take a photograph together. <laughs> oh, man. Because of the lockdown, which is weird, but... In due time, we'll get there. But yeah, I'll do that for sure. He, he also wants to know, can you play a, a, a Ted Nugent riff? Oh, uh, can I play a Ted Nugent riff? <laughs> uh, hold on, I have to tune up. What is, uh, what's, uh... Cat Scratch Fever. What is it? Oh, uh... <laughs> Something like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking badass, man. Hell yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> I like Stranglehold. What is it? How does Stranglehold go? Uh, well, uh... No, I forget it, man. Anyways, but yeah, Ted Nugent. I met him once. He stepped on my toe. He's a crazy bastard, huh? Yeah. He said, uh, he stepped on my toe. There was all these girls hanging out at the radio station. And he goes, he looks at everybody and he says... I'll be back later to crawl up your legs. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, another question, Ashley Grundy wants to know any crazy backstage experiences. Oh, for me, not really, because we play the small club, so there's really not a lot of backstage. But I've I've gotten backstage, you know, on a lot of big acts because I know uh, knew some friends and behind the scenes, you know. So you know, I got to meet Steven Tyler and. Uh, he was he was really nice actually and very calm and John Anderson from Yes nothing too crazy you know for the bands uh, from my band and bands I was in backstage it wasn't really it's a really tiny room there's not much going on <laughs> well it sounds like with that girl getting down on herself in front yeah of it stage. all happened up front yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's all up front man <laughs> yeah. That's fucking awesome, dude. You don't forget that. It's just like, did that just happen? Is she doing that? No. I thought Iggy Pop, you know, it was an Iggy Pop type thing, if you know what I mean. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he always looks like he's getting down on himself, man, when, he, when he's playing. <laughs> yeah. Iggy's cool, though, man. I love him, dude. Uh, another, another question. Vicky wants to know, have you ever played at any haunted venues? Any paranormal experiences? Um, ah, definitely, you get some vibes from some rooms for sure. Uh, the famous one in Montreal that we played and uh, we did our CD launch in my band in the '90s was uh, Fufun Electric, and that place got a weird vibe, man. It's spooky. I don't know if you see it, it's got you know goblins sticking out of the walls. It's it looks like you know. Check it out on the online. You'll see it's insane. It's an insane place. Nirvana played there, and everybody. Small joint, sound killer, but just a weird place, man. <laughs> Hell yeah! Uh, another question: Secret Weapon wants to know: Have any band members ever visited jail while on tour? Uh, had a problem with guitar players. That's why we became a trio in the '90s. Uh, guitar players just had a habit of getting thrown in jail for, you know, uh, uh, what was it, uh, stealing gas and, you know, <laughs> trying to get stuff, money for, you know, for their addictions and uh, got in trouble. And so we kept losing guitar players because of addictions. So I said, screw it, we're a trio. I'm fed up with. You know, I'll just wing it, and uh, and it worked out great for the trio. It was great, but I'm loving this lineup now because we can just layer. We didn't overload it, but we. It's nice to have the space and the, you know, I think one of the best solos uh, I've ever done for guitar is called Yesterday's News, and I'm so happy with that. It just I played it on a Strat, and I'm freaking, I'm just ecstatic that that came out of me, you know? So. Oh, yeah. Uh, another question, have you guys ever been detained at the border? Um, mm, I don't, no, not really. No, we tried to, you know, we had to go on a bus. When we went to New York, we actually... Uh, we went in a car, came back on a bus, we played a few, you know, played the clubs. We would rent, we'd borrow gear from other bands that we knew in New York City. And, uh, you know, most of the clubs have a standard set, drum set, you can just jump up just with your cymbals and stuff. So, no, we didn't really get, we are pretty tame guys, you know. Once we were down to a trio, trio, we were pretty tame. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. Well, I'm about out of questions for you, man. Is there anything else you want to let the people know? Uh, yeah. Just check out the tunes, man, and spread the word and enjoy. And we'll hopefully have more videos, uh, some live playing, and uh, you know, try to. S See if uh, people get into it a bit more and learn more about the band. Uh, we're on uh, the website is utopiapress.ca, and you can get, you know, you can download the music there. 
uh, from most digital distribution or just give us a shout out on message and we'll mail you uh, a vinyl if you want to buy a vinyl hell yeah man hell yeah well before I let you go I gotta get you to make us a station tag alright <laughs> right. All right. Whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Utopia Press, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. Cool. This is fucking Utopia Press, listening to MetalDevastationRadio.com. Fuck yeah, Check man. It out. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, brother. Well, thanks Thank a lot. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, man. Anytime, man. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blast some more Utopia Press for these motherfuckers. All right. What did you play? Uh, I, I don't have it on. <laughs> uh, first, I played uh, Devil's Got My Number. Cool. And uh, coming up next, I got Yesterday's News. All right, man. Thanks. All right, man. Crank it up. We'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Cheers. Cheers. There you have it, folks. Utopia Press live on the Zach Moonshine Show with Metal Devastation motherfucking radio. Like I said earlier, put your speakers in your fucking windows, put them in your front lawns, put them everywhere. Make everybody fucking hate you. This is Utopia Press. Mm-hmm.